Oh, duckies! Andy Olivier. And I know what you're thinking. Why have you got an helmet on? Well, it's because we need protection today because this is about to rock your world. So get yourself absolutely hyped up, protected, and ready because this is OBS version 28. Let's get into it. Put your rocket by the stone. This portion of the video has been sponsored by Own.Pro. Own.Pro have every single thing that you could possibly need for your stream in one place. It even goes above and beyond having actually partnered with Epidemic Sound for all your royalty-free music and sounds. You can also get access to over 600 overlays and alert packages. And you know what's even better? You can save yourself an absolute beastly 50% off using offer code Andy50Pro. And all purchases will help the channel out massively. All the links are in the description. Thanks Own.Pro for sponsoring this portion of the video. The first thing that I want to mention coming in OBS 28 is all the bug fixes. And obviously these things get fixed because you guys report it. So if you are downloading this beta and you are using it, then please make sure you do feedback any problems that you do have with it, alright? You can check out a full list of all the fixes and everything that we're about to talk about in this video in the description down below, alright guys? Right, so should we get this bad boy installed? This is OBS 28, again, the link is in the description, and this is Beta 1, released 10 hours ago. I should have done this a long time ago, but it's just uh, just how it is, isn't it? So you download it straight from this GitHub page, right down at the bottom, if we scroll all the way down, we can choose whichever one we want to do. If you want to download the Windows one, I would recommend using the installer, so give that a cheeky little click and it'll begin to download. If you cannot download it, you may need to log in to GitHub, but it should be just publicly available, so you shouldn't have an issue there. Once downloaded, crack it open and we can run through the installation steps, which is just follow next. Uh... So basically, just run that installer. That's a little bit awkward that I broke it. You just need to run the installer, go through all the set of steps, but make sure you don't just spam next. You need to choose a different folder for the installation path. Don't use the one that's already using your OBS because you don't want it to potentially break your streaming setup, do you? So I have installed it to my desktop, ready to use. It automatically puts it in portable mode, so if it's broken, you can still access your other OBS and still stream. Absolutely fine. Now that I've stopped being silly, we can open up OBS and you will see straight away it looks completely different. It looks beautiful. This is a new theme that has been added called Yami. This is the new default theme. As you can see, it looks super clean. So the first things I want to talk about are the UI elements that have kind of changed. So if we jump up to file and go to settings, there is actually an accessibility menu. Well, obviously, these nice little animations here as well. Uh, and we can actually change all of the colors for different things like the source border. Uh, the, so the selection crop hover, the mixer and everything like that uh, to make it a little bit better for, I don't know, colorblind alternatives and stuff like that. Or you can make your own custom one. So if I say choose my border selection and change it to, I don't know why, I don't know why I'd want to do that, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to press apply, press OK. Now when I add a source, you'll see straight away if I add a color source, you're not going to see very well here, but you can probably see a little bit. If I change this to red, now my outline to OBS is white. This leads me on to the next point. You can probably see a lot of changes here. We've got these lines on the outside. This will tell you the amount of pixels from each edge, so it makes it a little bit easier to align all your sources. And I know what you're gonna say. Oh, Andy, this has been in like Streamlabs for ages. And I'm gonna say, wait, now is another reason for you to come and move over to OBS Studio so you can get access to tons of different plugins. Am I right? Another thing I really like is now when we crop the sides of our sources, you can see it's actually a dotted line. So when you're trying to align little pixels up, it's so much easier uh, having a dotted line rather than a solid green line that you have to keep clicking off, clicking on. This is mint. The next one is still when we're messing around with the source. We've got a little circle all the way at the top here. We can actually rotate a source without going into the transform options. Obviously, you've got all the abilities like you had previously. Like if you hold down shift, you can snap at 15 degree intervals. Uh, as you know, that's how you do a lot of the snapping stuff. You can also hold down the control button to get a full free transform rotation. And then obviously, if you've got the auto align in the center bits, it will snap at every 90 degree interval as well. There also has been a ton of updates for YouTube, which is insane. So first thing is the actual ability to type into the chat box. Whereas before, when you had your chat 
docked inside of OBS, you couldn't actually send any messages directly through there, which was a little bit annoying. But now you can. I don't think I've got any footage if I have it there. There is also a huge update to bring OBS to the 21st century. There is HDR support. This is only supported for YouTube streams at the moment, so I don't want to go too much into that. But again, the link is down below if you do want to check this out yourself. There's a ton of cool options, and they have added more color formats and everything like that to support HDR content. If you want to help support the content and feed this kid, then please consider joining Coffee or Patreon. You'll also get some banging perks. Isn't that right, Winston? Yeah! There's also some super handy features, such as an easy shortcut to copy and paste source transform. So as you can see, I've got two color sources here that look completely different. But if I do Control Shift and C, and then Control Shift and V on the other one, boom, it actually copies the exact same source transform. It's easy as that. Rather than going into the right click menu, going down to transform, copy transform, paste transform. Right effort, super nice one that. Another nice one is if we're moving sources, you guys might use the, the arrows to move them left and right. As you can see, the pixels are counting down, counting up. But now if we hold down shift, it'll move them more quickly by 10 pixels now. Excel Drow's added copy and paste to visibility transition. So you're showing high transition. Now you can add copy and paste. So if I do say fade just there and go back onto it, I can actually copy that and then paste that into the other ones as well. So you can also mass copy and paste as well. So all these are set to none right now, as you can probably see. Now, if I set one of them to say cut or a different transform, I can actually go to show transform, press copy, select the other two that aren't it, go to show transform, press paste, and that will actually paste it to both of them as well. Saving so much time. A really nice handy one is the ability now to use Python 3 rather than just Python 3.6. So any version of Python 3 will work inside of OBS. So if you guys are wanna learn in that, that zoom technique that I keep doing with a mouse like this where it's the mouse and tracker and you've been struggling to get that installed, well now it should be even easier for you to do it. I'll leave that video in the description as well. And last but not least in this section is the most hype one ever. If we add in a video capture device like this, and we'll choose a camera. So I'm going to use my Logitech one just here. Look at this handsome chap. Bob the Builder. Uh, we're going to go and do configure the video and set all our settings. So I want it to be stupidly exposed like that. Contrast to be ridiculous. I want the sharp saturation to be up. There we go. I'm an orange man now. The sharpness all the way up as well. Look at this webcam. Looks absolutely fly. Now we're going to press apply. Okay. Okay, we're gonna shut down OBS because we've finished, all right? I've finished, that's just how it is. I'm gonna reopen OBS and check this out. All the settings are still live! Wonderful! You saw me do that live here. Whoo, magic! No more having to try and save the settings. It's automatically there. No third party software needed. Let's go. Another great feature is the ability to split all of your recordings really easily. So you can do this by the size of the file. You can also do it by duration and you can also do it manually by hotkey. To do this, we go up to file, then settings. In here, we can go down to output and then change the output mode to advanced. Go to recording and you'll see automatic file splitting here. We can do it by time, so it'll split all your files up bang on 15 minutes. You can do whatever time you want there. You can also do it by size, so when it reaches a certain megabyte, it can actually split the file. Makes it a lot easier to edit. And you can also do manual splitting. So if I wanted to do manual splitting, for instance, I go up to settings again, go to hotkeys, and there is a split recording file that I can trigger on a hotkey there as well. Mwah, bellissimo. So this one's super important, but I know a lot of you guys, unless you tell me below in the comments if you use it, is for Apple. There is native Apple Silicon support now, so any of the new M1, M2 Macs, they will all work with OBS natively, which is beautiful. So it'll stop having to use emulation, so it'll be more responsive. There, on top of that, there are a ton of updates and fixes and support for Mac on its own, but I don't want to go into that as I know most of this audience. Unless you tell me below, I'll leave a poll below. Let me know if you're a Mac OBS user, all right? Let's get some figures. I'll do more, more Mac content, potentially.
but you can check the GitHub for all of the Mac OBS updates. There are tons out there. Speaking of different platforms, there are also different Linux updates as well. Again, I'm not going to go into that on this, but you can definitely check out the GitHub page for that as well. There's a lot of bug fixes for Linux and adding some nice, cool, sweet stuff. And if you guys join the poll down below, I can probably see if I'm going to make you guys some content, right? Now we can get into what I've put on the notes as POG. I don't know. I just didn't categorize it, all right? I just It's just how it is, all right? Let's just get on with it. So inside of OBS, now we have got OBS WebSocket natively built in. I have got no plugins installed right now in OBS. And look at this. We've got WebSocket 5. Remember, 5. This is very important because 5 is not compatible with anything that is using WebSocket 4, okay? So, uh, like, currently, StreamerBot doesn't work and other things like that, but they will be updating to WebSocket 5, so don't you worry. You can obviously get OBS WebSocket 4.9 to work alongside. Just install it like a normal plugin. If you need help with that, I'll leave a link in the description as well. OBS WebSocket 5 brings so many new features, fixes, performance updates, everything like that. It has literally been rewritten from the ground up so you get the best functionality and makes it a lot easier working with a lot of different products that you might be using and also software. WebSocket was originally made with not all the crazy stuff in mind that we have nowadays so this is going to be a huge improvement. Stuff like Sammy is already working with WebSocket 5 just make sure you're using the right port which is port 4455 by default. Obviously setting all that up is pretty straightforward. If you want a video on that let me know in the comments down below. This one is super high Oh. oh, has this uh, video been helping you out? Then please consider pressing that subscribe button and that like button as it'll go a long way to supporting me, all right? Bye. Oh my days, we're gonna add a new source down here. What have we got? Application audio capture beta. It is built in to OBS. So what this means is when we add one of these sources, we can actually choose a specific window inside of OBS to be tracked for audio. So Chrome, for instance, we can have a separate Chrome channel for audio without having to use the third party plugin, which is mwah, insane. This will make organizing all of your audio sources so much easier. Your game audio, turn that down. Your music, turn that down. Obviously, I will be doing videos on this kind of stuff in the future as well, so stay tuned for that, all right? Also, check this one out. This one's for all you NVIDIA RTX users. Oh, it's getting me so excited. Right, if we add some filters to this wonderful webcam source that we've got down here. Good day, governor. We can add an effect filter to it. We right click, we add, and you'll see NVIDIA background removal. Let's actually go built in right now. Obviously, we can't see any change here, but if we move this wonderful thing out of the way, Oh, do, 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 and I'm not using NVIDIA Broadcast right now. It is built now inside of OBS. Speaking of NVIDIA, though, we actually have access to the audio one as well. So if we add a new filter to our audio channel, any audio channel, we can go to noise suppression and we actually have access now to NVIDIA noise removal, room echo removal, and both of them at the same time, which is insane. To get these to work, you will need to install the corresponding SDKs, otherwise it won't work at all all they'll be just kind of grayed out so make sure you do get them installed i'll leave them links down in the description there's going to be a lot of links today all right you've got a lot to learn i know insane obs 28 is gonna be absolutely mad obviously if you want to get your hands on it then get it in the description obviously there is a very important message right excel draw told me not all of your obs plugins will work with obs 28 straight away okay due to some of the frameworks that have changed so developers will need to update them Exceldro has told me that he is aiming to get his plugins into beta for next week, which is insane. Make sure you do stay up to date on Twitter because that's probably the first place that you will find out. Follow myself and Exceldro over there. All the information will be popping off. And obviously, this is a beta, so use at your own risk. Please make sure you, when you are installing, not overwriting your old OBS because that is just going to be a headache and a nightmare. Don't do it. Told you, you need to get your safety helmet. I 
told you we needed that today. And if you have any crashes, anything like that, please save the logs and send them over to the devs on GitHub, all right? So they can fix it and we can get it out as an official build ASAP because everybody wants to get their hands on this, right? Huge thanks to all these people down here. And obviously, if you want to support me, then consider joining Coffee and Patreon. All my links are down there. You guys know what to do by now. It massively helps me. Big, huge special shout out to Bongo, also Fever Team, Marcus Vasquez, and Romulo Sousa because you are my top supporters. Thank you so much for going above and beyond. And make sure you check out this video just here because this will help you out with one of the things I spoke about today. I've just not decided which yet. Put your rock over the stone. I'll see you in the next one.